Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will discuss various methods to handle secretions in your patient. Unfortunately, large randomized control trials are lacking in this area. However, lack of evidence here means we do not know the right answers yet. So, try to understand the principles and use them logically to guide your management. We will go step by step and see how secretions are removed from peripheral airways to outside glottis. Every patient has different needs, so weigh risk and benefits of each method before using it on your patients. When in need, discuss with your respiratory therapist about your patients. Please watch my earlier lecture on how your body handles secretions to understand some basic concepts that will make your understanding in this lecture much easier. Links are in description below. So there are three steps to manage any secretion. Step one is to maintain the quality of secretions. Step two is to get it out from peripheral airways to central airways by process we call sputum mobilization. And step three is to get it out of central airways to oropharynx or outside glottis. This is achieved by cough augmentation or suctioning. There are three basic principles behind these two methods. You have to increase the expiratory flow, increase the lung volumes and use oscillations during the flow. Quality of secretion is important. Make sure that patient does not have mucosal dehydration. However, overhydrating these patients does not result in better mucus quality. Watch out for those non-invasive ventilators without humidification. These can dry up secretions pretty fast. To thin out mucus secretions, use mucus secretor box like 7% saline NEPs, classical mucolytics like n acetylcysteine or peptide mucolytics, Dornis alpha and thymosin beta 4. However, the last two are useful only in cystic fibrosis patients. Guaifenshin has never been found to be effective in pulmonary diseases. So if you have to use mucolytic, use n acetylcysteine, which has been shown to reduce COPD exacerbation in outpatient settings. Mucolytics are most studied and found to be useful in cystic fibrosis and bronchiectasis patient. Mucolytic agents in acute respiratory failure in ICU have not been studied very well. In latest meta-analysis by Anand et al, they did not find a lot of studies to guide them to any decisions. So at this time, we do not know whether these medications help. Using prophylactic mucolytics to prevent thick secretions did not result in increased number of ventilator feedings and they did not also affect the accumulation of airway secretions in the endotracheal tube. Humidification is very important while patient is on the ventilator. So make sure that your humidifier is working properly. In a non-invasive ventilation, humidification is strongly suggested to improve adherence and comfort. However, understand that non-invasive can compromise cough and dry up secretions pretty fast. While intubating a patient who has been on non-invasive, make sure that you have macul forcep nearby as these secretions can dry up and they're very difficult to suction. While on oxygen cannula, the bubble humidifier do not provide adequate humidification, but they are certainly better than nothing. If you really need good humidification, use heated humidification if there are issues with secretions. So let's understand how to get secretions from peripheral to central and then outside larynx. You can pause this video to understand this flowchart more carefully. The methods to remove the secretions from airways is called airway clearance techniques and there are two types peripheral and proximal. Peripheral ACTs remove the secretions from smaller airways to central airways in a process called sputum mobilization. Removal of secretions from larger airways to outside is proximal airway clearance therapies also called cough augmentation. You have to use them together to achieve the best results. Let's talk about them one by one. Postural drainage is one of the easiest way to get secretions from peripheral to central airways. However, by itself, postural drainage is not helpful. It is helpful when the secretions are in large quantities. It works best when combined with oscillation, just like getting ketchup out of a bottle. Next is breathing techniques. Breathing techniques promotes flow of air beyond the obstruction through collateral channels. Breathing technique consists of three steps taking a slow, large tidal volume 
and pausing for three to four seconds, making sure that you are using thorax to breathe as much as possible and not your abdomen. And when you're exhaling, you're exhaling fast using huffing maneuver. There's not enough evidence to suggest active cycle breathing technique is superior to other techniques. However, it's patient directed and controlled and it's easy for a patient to do. Positive expiratory pressure can support your breathing techniques because it avoids airway collapse during expiration by creating positive and expiratory pressure. It also allows greater volume for exhalation. Instruments like a cappella adds positive expiratory pressure with oscillation, therefore help mobilizing the secretions even better. Manual techniques like chest percussion can loosen the secretions. You have to make sure that the patient atlactatic lung is in non-dependent position and you use vibration at 5 to 8 hertz. Just like other methods, the quality of evidence is pretty small because there are no studies done in this area. However, smaller studies show that there may be some benefit to this method. High frequency oscillation, such as used by West therapy, use a resonant frequency of the lungs. These vibrations can decrease the mucous viscosity and these secretions will then have net movement toward larger airways. A cappella and vibrating beds can help mobilizing the secretions as well. Intrapulmonary percussive ventilation possibly has the best evidence amongst all oscillatory devices. It can give 100 to 300 cycles per minute and it can give up to 10 to 40 centimeter of water pressure. In one study, it was found to be superior to West therapy by decreasing the rate of infection, decreasing antibiotic use and steroids in COPD patients. So in oscillatory therapies, IPV is possibly better than West, which is possibly better than Acapella. There is a moderate evidence in bronchiectasis and cystic fibrosis in using oscillatory therapies. However, the evidence in ICU is pretty weak because the studies have been small and retrospective. But just to clarify, this does not mean that oscillatory therapies are not useful in ICU. There is some benefit of using IPV in COPD patients. Sputum mobilization without cough augmentation or suctioning is useless because the secretions which have come from peripheral airways will tend to go back in if you don't suction them out or remove them or sometimes they can obstruct proximal airways if they are in large quantities. We talked about cough augmentation in our previous lecture. To get better cough, you need higher tidal volume so you can assist the inspiration and this is done by stacked breathing using glossopharyngeal muscles. You can assist expiration which will increase the expiratory flow rate and this is done by Heimlich and abdominal thrust movement. It can improve the peak cough flow, however, it requires cooperation from the patient. Combining both methods results in better cough augmentation and there are devices like mechanical insufflation exufflation device which can create positive pressure during inspiration and negative pressure during expiration and these can increase the flow by up to 300 liters per minute. However, these are not very useful if the patient has any dynamic airway collapse, chest wall restriction or severe bulbar palsy. One of the important things that you have to understand is cough is useful only if there is air behind the secretions. If there is no air present behind the secretions, you won't be able to cough that secretion out. So it is very important to perform sputum mobilization first so that these secretions come to central airways and air can reach behind these secretions so that you can cough them out. Flow bias is another way you can improve secretion clearance. Here, you, if you keep your peak expiratory flow more than peak inspiratory flow, you can have net movement of secretions from alveoli towards larynx. The effect is more augmented if the alveoli are in non-dependent position. There are four ways how you can achieve this positive flow bias. First way is to increase the tidal volumes about 50% above the current tidal volume and increase the eye time to 3 to 5 seconds. This should slow down the inspiratory flow to around 20 liters per minute. Then you can keep the difference between peak expiratory and peak inspiratory more than 30 liters per minute. This should help sputum mobilization. I will understand that low tidal volumes are important in patients on the ventilator. 
So see what your patient needs. There are a lot of other alternatives to secretion management, but not much for ARDS. Second method is expiratory ribcage compression, where you synchronize pressing the ribcage with patient expiration. If you apply soft and long pressure, this will move the secretions out from peripheral to central airways. If you apply hard and brief pressure, you can move secretions from central airways to outside. Using PEEP and JEEP method can help you achieve a positive flow bias as well. Here you increase the PEEP to 15 for 5 cycles of breathing and then reduce the PEEP to 0. However, understand that patient may lose recruitment. So make sure that you select your patient well. Mechanical insufflation and exufflation device can be also used to create positive flow bias by controlling their inspiratory and expiratory flow rates. Just like any other modalities, evidence is lacking in this area. The overall quality of evidence on efficacy of cough augmentation technique for critically ill patient is very low. And as you can see, there are only two studies in this area and with small number of patients. Next is direct clearance therapies. Here you either do suctioning or therapeutic bronchoscopy. Understand that these methods remove secretions from very proximal airways only, possibly till fourth order bronchi. Since there is a higher tendency of your suction catheter to go into right main stem because it is straighter and larger, you can turn the head towards the right, which can improve the success of left main stem bronchus catheterization. As we talked about, bronchoscopy can only access till fourth order bronchi, so you can only clean up proximal areas. Understand there are 18 more order bronchi further, which needs to be cleared off. We'll discuss more about role of bronchoscopy and secretions in next lecture. For now, understand that presence of air bronchograms, which show you that there is absence of proximal secretion and possibly the presence of distal secretion and atelectasis. These are associated with longer duration of atelectasis and minimal response to bronchoscopy. Adjunctive measures include early mobilization, setting up, head of bed elevation. Head of bed elevation reduces aspiration risk, increases thoracic breathing, and increases tidal volumes. Use of bronchodilation where indicated, treat the underlying infection, and reduce inflammation. Certainly avoid anticholinergic medications which tend to drive the secretions. Now you know all the various methods by which you can clear off any secretions. These all have three basic principles that we talked about. High tidal volumes, higher expiratory pressures, and oscillation. And if you think about it, these are nothing but things needed for a good cough. So there are only four methods that we can use to clear off secretion. Sputum mobilization, cough augmentation, suctioning, and you can use mucolytics as well. Let's do a few examples. You have got a patient on the ventilator with mucus plugging. In these patients, the first step is to get rid of the central secretions and you can use either bronchoscopy or direct suctioning to help you achieve this. Once you have cleared off central secretions, you can use n cysteine if the secretions are thick. Remember that with bronchoscopy and directed suctioning, you cannot remove the secretions from peripheral airways, so make sure that you do sputum mobilization technique using vest oscillation, intrapulmonary percussive ventilation, chest physical therapy and postural drainage, or increasing flow bias. Make sure that the sputum that is coming out of your peripheral airways is regularly suctioned out. Repeated bronchoscopy are usually not necessary. Let's see how to manage a patient who developed mucus plugging after extubation. First thing is to check how hypoxemic the patient is. If the patient is hemodynamically stable and is on low FiO2, perform directed suctioning. Deep nasal tracheal suctioning can stimulate cough and help clear out the secretion. If the patient oxygen requirements are low, you can also go for cough augmentation technique like manually assisted cough and mechanical insufflation exufflation device. If patient is hemodynamically unstable, patient may need to be intubated and bronchoscopy performed. If the FiO2 requirements are less than 50%, you can even perform an awake bronchoscopy. After the bronchoscopy, you will know the quality of secretions. You can use 7% saline or anestyle cysteine if required. Make sure that patient is on adequate humidification, avoid anticholinergics, 
and certainly avoid non-invasive ventilation in such patients. Remember the secretions which are much more distal are possibly still present after bronchoscopy. So perform sputum mobilization techniques with vest therapy, bed vibration, chest percussion, a cappella, and if available, intrapulmonary percussive ventilation. Use adjunctive measures. Measure peak cough flow to assess the risk of redevelopment of mucus plugging. Avoid dehydration. Early mobility will be a good thing to do and take steps to prevent aspiration. If your patient has neuromuscular weakness but no bronchial disease, their mucociliary escalators should take care of normal secretions. Things can certainly spiral down when they develop atelectasis. So make sure that you use atelectasis prevention techniques. Watch my lecture on atelectasis and how to prevent and treat it. Links are in description below. These patients usually need supportive care. Make sure that air is adequately humidified. Avoid anticholinergics. Measure peak cough flow to assess their risk. Minimize sedation and opiates. And perform atelectasis prevention techniques. If these patients develop pneumonia, their mucociliary escalator is compromised. These patients are at high risk of forming mucus plugs. Then the underlying problem is because they have very poor cough reflex. So use your three techniques to help these patients. Maintain the quantity and quality of secretions. Use 7% saline and use humidification. Try to avoid drying up any secretions. Get the secretions from peripheral to central airways using simple techniques like chest percussion, positioning, and a cappella. If patient is still unable to handle, use vest therapy. Stimulate their cough using directed suctioning. Deep anti-suctioning can help. Use mechanical insufflation exufflation device and manually assisted cough. BiPEP can be double-edged sword in these patients. While it can help with their atelectasis, it can compromise their secretion excretion. These patients are at high risk of intubation because of their secretion handling issues. However, using these simple methods, you should be able to manage many of them. Anticholinergics like glycoparolate and scopolamine are for hospice use only and try to avoid using them on ventilated patient or patients with secretion issues. Always be cautious of placing a patient on non invasive ventilation if they have secretion issues as it prevents their coughing and non-humidified air will dry up their secretions and make the obstruction imminent. In summary, use peak cough flow meter to identify your patients at risk. There are three steps to secretion management. First, managing quality and quantity of secretions. Second, getting secretions from peripheral to central airways using sputum mobilization. And third, getting secretions from central airways to outside using cough augmentation and suctioning. Understand what your patient needs and many patients will need combination of all three techniques to handle their secretions. Thank you.